So um, I hope all the participants have joined again in time for our uh, final session of day three, which is artificial intelligence in libraries, uh, case study of the National Library of Norway. So good afternoon to our speaker, Sven Arn Breitfield, who is the head of the NBAI lab at the National Library of Norway. So just a little bit about a speaker. Uh, he's been working for the telecom industry, but is currently employed by the National Librarian's Office in Norway. At the library, he's been managing a large number of projects, including several networked multimedia projects. Since 1998, he's also been responsible for research and innovation, including driving the use of AI at the National Library of Norway and its partners, including Stanford Libraries. Uh, Sven, uh, Sven holds a master's degree in computer science. So uh, without taking too much time off the session, I would like to hand it over to Sven to start his session. Like the previous session, I really appreciate uh, engagement from the participants. So please feel free to come up with questions on chat or you can ask them later after the session is concluded. With that, uh, Sven, you can take over. I'll stop sharing so you can share. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll start sharing my screen just yeah. uh, a second. So there it is. Um, so can you see my presentation now? Yes, it's visible. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the invitation to, to join this workshop and, uh, and do this presentation. Uh, and I hope there will be uh, quite a lot of this, uh, questions and, and uh, discussion, of course. So I am Sven Arne Brykvel and I am at the National Library of Norway uh, at the moment uh, being leading the uh, AI lab uh, at the library. I will talk briefly about the AI lab uh, as well uh, during, uh, during this presentation. <clears throat> so uh, my plan, my intention at least uh, for this uh, presentation is to talk a little about uh, um, what we are doing uh, at the National Library, um, why and uh, uh, how, what the definition of AI is uh, within the context uh, of libraries. Um, I will try to introduce you to some main concepts, uh, partly through uh, examples and, and partly through, um, through more uh, abstract uh, presentations. <clears throat> and I'll try to uh, draw some conclusive remarks uh, at the end. So the background for what we are doing is that uh, uh, back in 2006, we started off uh, with a digitization program. Um, and as uh, the, the main memory institution in Norway, as the National Library, uh, we have more or less what is whatever has been published in Norway. <clears throat> on all media, that is uh, um, books, of course, newspapers, uh, radio, television, moving images, still images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we also do harvesting of, uh, of the internet. So far, we have digitized more or less uh, all the books ever published in Norway. Uh, more than 50% of all the newspapers. We have a lot of journals, still images, moving images, and we have audio collections and, uh, and more. And of course, this is the perfect arena to, to do AI. Um, and we also have this AI uh, lab. Um, <clears throat> you have to excuse my voice. Um, it is a little weak today. So um, the uh, nickname of uh, our AI activity is Nancy. Nancy is named after a librarian in, in Seattle, Nancy Pearl, which also has this magic uh, um, uh, doll, which you can buy in, in uh, named after her, which you can buy in, in shops. Um, we have a couple in our uh, in our lab. <clears throat> so this lab is is a very defined activity, uh, reporting directly to the National Library. Um, we. We are supposed to uh, produce input for a conversation on AI 
uh, and we do this through small scale projects and experiments. Uh, they may be as small as days or weeks, or they may be uh, up to years in, in volume. Uh, we currently are four uh, more or less skilled people and we do some sourcing. And typically, uh, questions that we, we try to, to answer uh, are uh, if we can automate uh, parts of the metadata production, um, can AI understand the meaning of text? <clears throat> can we uh, classify or describe uh, still images or moving images for that sake? Can we do speech to te uh, text transformation, uh, let's say for our radio collection? Um, and uh, uh, how can how can we serve as a basis to to build uh, good uh, good AI systems in general? Let us try to uh, make a sort of a uh, definition of AI. And I like this one because it is so uh, general and vague enough uh, and ambitious uh, above all. And it says that uh, AI is the science of engineering of making machines that do tasks that have never seen and have never been prepared for beforehand. <clears throat> and I think this is very much uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, through training of systems, making them being able to um, to do new things, unexpected things. And within the library, <clears throat> I like this um, uh, this uh, vague or this um, phrase making the, uh, the our lives less precise and more approximate. I believe that through AI, we are on the move from uh, what we suppose is very precise to something which is approximate, but good enough. And I'll give you a few examples of that. So why, why do we do this in libraries? Traditionally, I presume you all know this pyramid uh, spanning from data at the bottom through information knowledge up to wisdom. <clears throat> um, and I believe uh, it is right to say that the traditional digital library, including ours, um, is in the lower two parts of, uh, uh, of the pyramid, uh, the data and information part of the pyramid. While we would like to be higher up, we would like to give access to knowledge rather than information. Uh, today, we give access mainly to information uh, yeah, um, this is, um, in my eyes, an important uh, motivation to do AI in libraries, to try to give uh, people access to knowledge. As a basis for our activity and, and uh, I have to stress this, this is for our, our activity, and it has been very helpful for us, is the notion of, of having a, a basic object model in our digital library. And this is more or less uh, how it was. It consists of uh, content of different uh, uh, types, uh, spanning from books to moving images and, and, and uh, uh, objects from uh, the internet. And we have a lot of metadata mainly produced by hand over decades. Uh, and uh, for the metadata, we have different kinds of, of, of data, data, metadata, like descriptive. We have technical and, uh, and uh, structural information. We have identification and, and, and more. And uh, then we build some services based on the common practice on, on the internet based on this general model. This is slightly on the move now, uh, since we are uh, already in the digital domain also for libraries. This means that we receive a lot of metadata from uh, the publishers included with, uh, with the content. And we also do less digitization 
you will see more digital content. What we see now with uh, AI is that this model is, is expanding, it is changing. Since we receive quite a lot of metadata from AI based uh, systems, <clears throat> and this includes, uh, it, this introduced some, some challenges in terms of the approximate, like you cannot uh, uh, have a manual control of all the metadata we, that we produce and include in our systems, for example. Um, and we also um, include functionality. That is, uh, you can imagine that uh, we don't have to, to do everything beforehand. We can, uh, instead of producing a lot of static metadata, we have uh, um, the same thing, the same uh, experience, uh, but in functionality. I will do some illustration of that as well. So um, another uh, meaning of, of the term model is the model in within uh, AI. And as you go into the, the field of AI, you're going to meet this uh, term model. And the model is uh, shortly uh, software uh, based on statistics and mathematics, and it is trained on data to perform according to some expectations. Um, we have, for example, language models which may or may not understand language structure and content. Uh, they may, for example, do translation or summaries, and uh, I'll do other examples uh, later. Or we, uh, we may have visual models where the software is more or less the same as for the, the language models, <clears throat> but the, the visual models are trained on, on visual objects. And uh, um, they can, for example, recognize objects and in it or do other types of analysis. What is common for this um, is that the objects that we have, that we are handling, like the objects in, in the model I, I presented in the previous slides, they are represented as, as mathematical vectors in a very large uh, vector space. Um, this is, I presume, to, to quite a few uh, difficult to, to, to grasp, to understand, uh, but I'll uh, give at least a few examples of that as well, the multidimensional vector space. Another term which is uh, very, very important uh, uh, when we go into the, uh, the field of AI is machine learning. And machine learning is uh, shortly um, teaching software to behave based on, um, based on data that we have. Uh, so we have a piece of software, we have uh, data, and then we can do either unsupervised um, training or learning, which is simply trying and failing. And we have supervised, uh, for example, if we have a lot of books, we have metadata for those books, and we can uh, uh, train the, the software based on, uh, on those data. And we can uh, give the, the software feedback and reinforce the, uh, the learning. <clears throat> so the components that we need is, of course, software, and there is a lot of free well-performing software out there. We need the data, which we normally have um, a lot of uh, in a digital library. Um, and what is one of the benefits of libraries is that we normally have structured metadata for uh, content, which means that we can teach the, uh, the software to behave in some, some way or another. And then you uh, we need compute power, which is uh, often a challenge. Uh, but start start small, uh, and you can do it on your own uh, personal computer. And you need a certain uh, amount of skills, uh, but not too much uh, nowadays. You can, of course, skip those uh, above and just uh, use a pre-trained model uh, if you find one which is uh, suitable for your needs. So let us go uh, shortly 
uh, into the, uh, the era of machine learning. And in this case, <clears throat> I'm focused on what we call supervised uh, learning. And again, supervised learning is uh, that you have some content and related to the content, you have metadata, for example, and uh, um, the normal way of, of, uh, of work is uh, that you, um, uh, you, you hide some parts of the content and the metadata from the learning process and you do testing of the performing model based on uh, the parts that you have hidden away uh, beforehand. So the loop is uh, relatively trivial. You do on the left hand training based on what you have content and metadata. Uh, after some training, you go to the test phase and you test according to some measures that you, uh, you have established beforehand, <clears throat> like uh, the uh, uh, how good uh, a model, uh, for example, would produce metadata. And you will measure against the existing metadata uh, uh, based on a known, known uh, solution. And when the, uh, uh, the model is performing good enough, we move to the, to the right and we can, uh, we can use it. Um, if it isn't good enough, we go uh, back, back left. Uh, we do retraining uh, or we um, change the software or do other manipulation. Um, this is relatively abstract, but I'll uh, show you just one example of how, how this is done or uh, context uh, where it has been done. So we imagine um, our digital bookshelf, our collection of digital books in, within the National Library. <clears throat> um, to make them available to the public, we are paying the right holders uh, a small fee for each book. The right holders, uh, they want um, uh, this money to be split in, in four uh, piles of, of, of money, uh, which may be distributed to uh, parts of the right holders organization. So we have, in fact, <clears throat> four groups of, of literature. Let's, uh, in this example, call them A, B, and C. And the challenge is uh, to, to place books uh, within those four uh, groups or categories of books. Happily, we have some metadata uh, for a few thousand of these books, uh, which uh, um, with, with content and, and metadata. We do training <clears throat> and we do the testing as described before uh, with uh, those uh, metadata and with those uh, uh, with the content of those books. Uh, and um, our, our goal was to do better than 90%. That is, we would, we would like the model to um, be correct in more than 90% of, of uh, the cases uh, on which it was tested. And the result in, in, our, in our case, and this is approximately one week of work, is that our <clears throat> software, Nancy, is performing uh, correct in more than 95% of the cases. <clears throat> and back to, to uh, approximate and good enough. This is one, uh, one example of uh, good enough, uh, where we have decided beforehand that 90% is good enough, and obviously 95 is. <clears throat> Another example of, of uh, improvement and good enough uh, is um, is um, there are visual models. Uh, for uh, quite a few years, we have had a, a competition uh, among those communities building visual models. And um, we have had uh, a fixed set of, of training data uh, in the format of, uh, uh, of images with metadata and the metadata was uh, objects and the, the location of the objects uh, on the images. Back in 2011, <clears throat> uh, the best performing um, models had 26% errors. Uh, five years later, in 2016, 
in this competition, uh, the best performing models uh, had uh, three percent errors. And then you might ask, well, is three percent errors uh, good enough? And one measure might be the performance of the human being, which we are happy to have. And uh, on the average, uh, the human uh, performs with five percent errors. This means that already. <clears throat> the uh, the best software is performing better than the uh, the normal average human being, and uh, uh, there is no more competition on on this area any longer because the uh, the task is too trivial for AI now. Um, and just uh, a side comment um, on how difficult or not difficult it is to do, for example. Uh, description and uh, um, uh, category categorization of, of images. <clears throat> so this is an example of uh, use of an API uh, at a vendor. In this case, um, Google Google Cloud. Uh, you just send the image to the API, and you receive a description back. In this case, uh, a pretty uh, good description of what is on the image. What, for example, Google Cloud does in addition is to do uh, OCR on texts on this image. You can you cannot see the <clears throat> the result here, but uh, even the vertical handwritten text is is relatively good. Another um, side comment um, is that. In our culture, uh, and I think this is very popular, uh, at least especially in in, uh, in the private sector, is to be uh, in the organization what we call by model. Uh, that is, uh, on one hand, be uh, strong on the production, be focused, uh, perform well. On the other hand, be open and do innovation uh, research or experiments and let those influence each other. Um, and we have tried to do so within our library uh, pretty much. Uh, and I'll illustrate that uh, through another example, and at the same time, um, illustrate one of the unexpected things that might happen uh, if you're open, if you are by model. So the assumption in this case is that uh, uh, if you go back to the vector space I talked about that at the beginning, where we have the, uh, the, the, the vectors, the mathematical representations of uh, content, and uh, uh, we assume that uh, vectors uh, with less distance, they tend to be in some way more similar or look more alike. Uh, so that is the assumption. Um, and then we do one experiment, which is uh, to select some images and just produce the uh, uh, the vectors and do a an, uh, visual test. And the second, which is uh, harder, is to do the same text. <clears throat> so. For example, if I have um, an image of my favorite uh, flower, uh, the toughest of all, and I would like to find other images of those uh, of this um, this flower, um, the the normal way of doing that uh, within the library would be to to search in metadata for the name of this flower or the color of the flower. Uh, and we might do that uh, through AI and do classification of all the images based on uh, supervised learning. But what we do now is that we cut off. We don't um, we don't use the result of the classification or description of, of the image. We focus on <clears throat> what we call the the last hidden layer uh, within the model, which is sort of cheating. It is going into the model and trying to understand what what happens. And we try to compute the, the distance between um, the uh, objects in the hidden layers. And the distance, you can imagine the 
distance between the objects flying around in this <clears throat> multidimensional uh, vector space. And then we present the result. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, uh, closest neighbors in the vector space are uh, grouped together. So let, uh, let me show you one example of this. <clears throat> well, two examples of this. Um, this is uh, uh, a collection and, and, and uh, uh, random images from uh, a historical collection. I choose the, uh, um, the image of the car with a circle around it, and I, I will have a look at the closest neighbors. And it looks like this. And this is not a comp comparison, uh, not a uh, um, search for cars. It is just uh, um, computation uh, of distance in a vector space. I do the same uh, with the girl and the horse uh, to the left with the ellipse around. And the result is this. Uh, I get a lot of horse uh, images. And I think this is the proof of the pudding. Uh, and, uh, and again, a good example of good enough, uh, the bull, uh, which by accident um, is very close to the horses. And the next question then was, well, will this work on text? We, we might expect it to, to, uh, to work on um, on images, uh, but for text. And this is, uh, again, our bookshelf. This is <coughs> maybe encrypted to you, <clears throat> but if you have a look at uh, the author, the list of authors is in this list, you will see that uh, they look uh, quite, uh, quite the same. And for this, you can also see the, the titles they uh, tend to be um, close to each other, and even in this uh, very much closer. Uh, and the con conclusion is that the um, this works uh, pretty well for uh, for text as well. Uh, so the next step then is that well through experiments we have proved that uh, this similarity um, assumption. Uh, tends to be uh, usable within the library. So the next step is just to make a, a user experience, which we deliver out to, uh, to no ordinary users, where they can navigate through our collection uh, based on uh, similarity and partly on metadata. So in this um, in this case, I choose the book uh, in the middle. Uh, I get a, a, a list of similar books as, as the AI systems uh, sees it, uh, and I can go directly to the books. And uh, even though this is encrypted, you can see by the illustrations that they tend to be uh, close to each other. Then I'll spend um, a few minutes on uh, uh, one of the things that one of the eras, fields of AI, which has um, had a, a, a radical development through the last years, and uh, one of the eras that might have uh, most significance for, for libraries in particular, which is the field of natural language processing or NLP. Um, we have seen um, new models uh, and being able to, to learn uh, in on a level which we have never, never uh, seen before and which uh, on some fields even compete with, um, with the human being. Um, and we can see this in, in a lot of use cases now. I'll give you at least uh, one or two examples. <clears throat> So just to illustrate uh, uh, the change, uh, I, dis I did this, uh, um, this search on Google, uh, and I presume quite a few of you use Google daily. 
and I was doing the, the search, what is the depth of the Suez Canal? <clears throat> and um, of course, uh, uh, motivated by the boat, which was um, uh, stopping all the, the traffic in, in, in the Suez Canal. And I was expected a list of uh, websites which I could uh, look at. Uh, but this is uh, the answer from Google. It is 25 meters. And <clears throat> this is the illustration uh, where Google has um, made use of NLP to interpret, to understand the, uh, the essence of, the, of my question and then look for relevant uh, answers on the net rather than uh, resources. This is also a relatively radical example, which is an article from The Guardian, uh, which was completely written by um, a language model uh, published by uh, OpenAI in San Francisco. Um, you will find this in this article on the internet, and it is, in my eyes, amazing to, to read. So this model is, is uh, able to um, based on a, a good start, it is able to continue uh, writing a story. Uh, and the OpenAI has all, uh, also published an, an API for, for this. <clears throat> uh, one relevant era for us uh, in libraries is the, the era of named entity recognition. So, for example, let us imagine the sentence that Anne and Peter established the company Peter and Anne Limited. Uh, so, what is the uh, uh, the meaning of Anne, Peter, and Peter and Anne? Of course, in the first uh, two uh, cases, there are two persons. In the uh, latter, Peter and Anne, uh, it is the name of a company. How can the uh, uh, the software know? Well, <clears throat> based on on the uh, latest developments on, on NLP, uh, we have models now that can um, uh, identify or find uh, um, these entities with a good pre precision. Uh, and these entities might be, for example, uh, names of persons, organizations, places, uh, and, and other uh, components within the text. Uh, which might might be usable, especially in in a library, for example, to uh, to build networks between uh, between documents. Uh, so uh, at the moment being, uh, our model, which we recently uh, published at at the National Library, uh, is performing at approximately ninety two percent. That is, in ninety two percent of uh, of the cases, it will be right in classifying uh, words uh, within text based on context. And I will finish this presentation uh, by just going through uh, a relatively old example that we made a demo, but uh, which still serves, uh, serves as a good example of what is possible to do based on what we have seen uh, <coughs> through my presentation so far. Uh, and the challenge now is to make a, a completely a complete digital library based on machine learning only. Uh, no cataloging, no human intervention. And we trust the content from 2011 for 250 newspapers to radio network uh, uh, net, net radio networks <coughs> in, in Norway and one television channel to have a variation in content. Uh, and we try to extract persons, places, organizations. We try to relate to time. We try to relate uh, uh, between uh, objects and, and content and, and do some classification. We did, did this uh, through uh, mainly machine, lear machine learning based uh, functionality to extract uh, uh, text from all of these uh, uh, content carriers. Uh, based on this, we did the, the entity extraction as I um, uh, described it uh, on the previous slide. 
uh, and we did some analysis of the content. We combined with the geo locations from the internet and we uh, exported everything into a search platform and made a, a, a user experience on this. So all the blue ones here are uh, machine learning based uh, functionality. And this is what we resulted. Uh, this is the result of, of, of this, this work. And, and the amount of this work is approximately, approximately eight man hour, eight man, man uh, months. So less than a, a year of uh, work for one person. Um, <clears throat> So this is just a uh, um, uh, uh, presentation of, of the collection of data uh, in a map of Norway with, uh, with the neighbors, Sweden, and Finland, and Europe. Uh, and to the left, you have some, some bars showing the frequency of uh, words, and you have the frequency uh, at top left uh, spread on, on time. I can zoom into uh, the, the map, and this is, of course, based on uh, geolocations uh, connected or related to, um, to, uh, to the content, the uh, entities. And you can see to the left, uh, you can see the frequency of, uh, of um, words within the, uh, the map that is displayed. In this case, uh, I have done a, a, a search for the name Jens Stoltenberg, who was the prime minister at the at the time, and you can see that um, there is some a certain relationship between Jens Stoltenberg and the um, the words to the left indicated by the bars. So, for for example, uh, there is a strong relationship between Jens Stoltenberg and Norge, which is Norway, uh, which is shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, there is uh, a strong re re relationship between uh, the prime minister and his um, party, the Labour Party, AP. <clears throat> and also uh, with the person, Maria Amelie, uh, to the uh, bottom left. And uh, we will follow this relation uh, to Maria Amelie. Uh, um, Maria Amelie was very much in, in the news. Uh, she was an illegal immigrant. Uh, which is very uncommon in Norway. And she was a successful uh, illegal immigrant and uh, was on the front page uh, of many newspapers. And uh, uh, if we have a look at uh, this newspaper page, page, which is considered by uh, our AI to be relevant and have a closer look at this, you can see that uh, in this uh, part of uh, uh, of the page, both uh, uh, Jens Stoltenberg and Maria Amelie is, is mentioned. So this, uh, this serves uh, as an illustration of what um, we can do relatively easily uh, if we have the content and we have uh, the software. So I am at the end of my presentation now and uh, um, whenever I do these presentations, I, 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 I try to, to do, uh, understand what I try to say. And uh, I think that I uh, have indicated at least that uh, what we see of AI today is strong enough to, as a minimum, improve our existing workflows. And I also believe that it, it's going to introduce completely new workflows that we are going to stop doing things and start doing other things. Um, it is obvious that we will um, have a lot of metadata amongst that we have never seen before and that those metadata may serve as a good uh, platform for new, uh, new user services. Uh, all in all, I think um, AI will make uh, the library a better library, which is, in my eyes at least, a, a very good thing. That is really what we want. We will do better for research and education. We will do much better for cultural history, for uh, 
both using knowledge and producing knowledge. Uh, I believe that AI will uh, enable the library to be uh, an impo uh, important part uh, also in the future. So that is it for today, from me at least. <laughs>